In 2006, documentary and filmmaker Fatul Rahman Ghazali was on the lookout for a subject for his documentary when he spotted something that stopped him in his tracks. I saw this beautiful house. It's a beautiful wooden house uh, smack right uh, in the middle of a big, big building. Describing the feeling as love at first sight, he began to wonder who is staying in that lovely wooden house? And what story did this house at number 41, Jalan Chauke, have to tell? This house in the middle of KL and well managed, well maintained. Uh, so it's questioned me a lot. Uh, There's one morning, then I saw this uh, nene. Uh, she's uh, outside of the house. Um, uh, trimming, trimming some trees. Father Rahman introduced himself to her and told her he wanted to make a documentary about her house. Thrilled, she gave her consent. Her name was Noma Manjawali. It was while making the documentary that he started calling the house Numa Dikil because it had stubbornly survived wars, riots, and modern day development. Uh, I think uh, this house got some character, even it's beautiful, but uh, you can see the stubborn of the house. When, when I did my research uh, and I found it's built in 1926, so it's go way back on it. Uh, yeah, it goes way back on uh, Japanese occupation, uh, uh, 19. Uh, 69 riot so it uh, uh, may, may, uh, many things happened uh, back then so but it survived Father Rahman also discovered that the beautiful house was built by Haji Jaffa Sultan Sinomba also known as Sultan Mengatas he was the nephew of Sultan Puasa making Norma a direct descendant of the man as well and who exactly was Sultan Puasa? A book titled Sultan Puasa, Founder of Kuala Lumpur, written by Abdul Razak Lubis and published in 2018, describes him as the earlier founder of the capital city. He also discovered that Noma had lived there since her birth in 1932. And although she moved out when she married, she returned after her husband died. It became clear all too soon that just like the house, Noma had a stubborn streak as she refused to sell despite being offered a lot of money for it. Fatul Rahman completed the documentary in 2007. But years later, a call from one James Chong found him revisiting the subject of Ruma Tegil all over again. Chong told him the land where the house stood had been sold. Worse yet, the house was to be demolished. Refusing to see Ruma Dekil disappear into thin air, Fatul Rahman agreed to join Chong, his cousin Tan K. Chi, and several others to save the house. Saying like, yeah, why not? Why not try this? The house was first carefully dismantled and the parts stored at another location. The house was acquired by Jabatan Warisan Negara and subsequently reconstructed at the National Art Gallery. During the process of rebuilding, Fatul Rahman recalled how the house once toppled during a heavy storm. Nevertheless, its stubborn streak prevailed, and in 2019, the house was successfully reconstructed. Today, Ruma de Gil stands beautiful and proud at its new site, a wonderful relic of the past that has resolutely made its way into present times. As he sits on the steps of the house at its new location, Fatul Rahman shares what the rebuilding of the house means to him. From the moment I saw it first time, I knew this house will survive for 100 or 200 years. So I, and I know uh, this house will be, uh, will be famous one day. I, I don't know why, but that, that's the feel. And then um, when 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 we know the Sultan Posse story, then we then uh, then I I 
I, I know this thing will happen and somebody will save the house. How did Noma react to this incredible effort to save her ancestral home? After the complete of the house, we, we drove by uh, her house and show the, the, the picture of the house and uh, she happy and looks sad because she want to go back to the house. But she, she was too ill that time. Noma passed away later that year. She was 87 years old. Until today, Fatul Rahman still affectionately refers to her as Nini. So, um, yeah, this is, this is for her. 